Hello and welcome to Dan Makes Things. My name is Dan and I made a companion robot. This is a project that's been in progress for a couple of years. And so I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about the history and motivation behind the project, as well as give you a high level overview. But first, who am I? I'm a software engineering manager in the Northeast of England, and I have been involved in software development for around 20 years. That said, none of my professional experience has been in robotics, electronics, or real-time systems. This means that everything I've needed to know in order to design and build this project has been learned through freely available means, like YouTube videos, online courses, and so on. Why am I telling you this? Well, because if I can build a robot like this, then so can you. In fact, you can build this robot if you want to, and we'll talk more about that later. When I started the project, I had a number of goals that I wanted to realize. I wanted the project to be fully autonomous. I wasn't interested in making something that I needed to manually control or puppeteer. The goal was to allow this robot to interact with people using natural language input and a camera for visual detection. I wanted the project to be modular and upgradable so that as I added new features or integrated new technology, I could do so without having to redesign the entire thing. I wanted the project to be more open source, but more than that, I wanted it to be accessible. It's one thing to make the designs and code available for use freely, but if I choose to integrate expensive actuators that are unaffordable for most hobbyists, it limits who can build the system for themselves. And most of all, I wanted it to be fun to work on, and I wanted to focus on using tech that I was excited about trying out and integrating. The initial concept was an animated cube. The robot would begin as a solid cube that then raised up off the base and could pan and tilt to animate and track faces. The gap in the cube formed an abstract face and had a NeoPixel LED matrix behind to allow the light to shine through. The face also featured a camera in one of the larger holes. I liked this design, but adding the necessary electronics, batteries and actuators left very little room for movement. So I decided to look at other forms that would work better. I started the next iteration by researching what I was capable of building and used that to inform decisions around the form it would take. I was also heavily inspired by a number of existing concepts in games and movies that I wanted to draw. As you can see in the bottom right, I initially had to build it by hand out of wood but soon upgraded to a 3D printer, which vastly improved the speed of development. You can see some of the designs here for the neck mechanism, which would raise the head off the body and then allow for panning and tilting, and a few attempts at creating my own servo horns. At the time, I was using Tinkercad, as it was easy to get started, and have since migrated to Onshape. I chose these platforms for accessibility, as they're both browser-based and make it easy to share designs with others. As I researched, I started to understand the features I wanted the project to have. I wanted motion sensing to allow me to detect the presence of someone nearby. This helps with behavior, but also allows the robot to go into power saving mode if no one is near. I wanted to be able to trigger different behaviors based on interactions with people, so I added face detection and recognition, as well as speech recognition. Python made this relatively easy to do, although there were definitely challenges pulling everything together. I continued the use of the NeoPixel addressable LEDs from the previous design. This caused a few problems that are only recently being resolved, but have been useful for remoting and for debugging the state of the software in real time. I wanted to create custom PCBs because of the complexity of the electronics assembly. I realized that at first this may seem to be a barrier for entry, but the PCB files are available in the project and anyone can send them to a PCB manufacturer for cheap and fast production. This is much more accessible than having to wire everything together on a breadboard or something similar. As you can see here, version one was quite large and not particularly well designed. The goal was just to get everything in and working as an initial proof of concept. In that regard, it worked well but the body was very large and the legs were too flexible to support the weight. Despite that, it could sit and stand and track faces. 
I wasn't happy with those issues, so I decided to work on a smaller, second iteration. Version 2 was designed to be as small as it could. I used micro servos instead of standard servos and reduced the size of the body and head considerably. It was much more portable than the previous version and was the first version that could also run on battery power. You can see the finished version here. As you can see, it was capable of standing and sitting most of the time and was easier to work with, but left very little room to add improvements and modifications. You can see the strength of the MG92B servos here when I accidentally set them to the standing position at full speed. They were more than capable of carrying the weight of the robot. On the right is another example, this time of the speech recognition and animation code. This was recorded live and no remote control was used here. I decided to introduce the Coral USB accelerator to allow the face tracking to work more quickly, but unfortunately there wasn't room on this design. I also wanted to improve the strength of the legs as these would detach quite frequently because they were pinned directly to the servos. So for those reasons I started working on a new more modular version. The goal of this version was to make everything more robust, but also to allow myself room to improve without a full redesign process. The legs are designed so that, should I need to change the gear ratio or the servos used, I can reprint only the relevant parts and reassemble quickly. Similarly, the body and head is assembled in stages, with detachable panels for easy access and replacement. This version used the same Python software for the Raspberry Pi and an Arduino sketch for the legs, but in an improvement to the previous design, I delegated the servo movement to the Arduino meaning it could use inverse kinematics to calculate the leg positions and could animate independently of the Pi. This was useful, as the power requirements of the Pi are quite significant, so this decision meant that if I wanted to demo the robot at events without the Pi connected, it could operate for much longer periods, albeit without the face detection and other higher level features. The body includes three 18650 lithium-ion batteries that can be removed to recharge and a buck DC to DC converter to allow anything up to 30 volts to be used for the input. The head is also detachable, so it can be used independently of the body with its own power input or attached to any other device with a serial interface. There are quite a few use cases starting to be considered for this framework, and as more people are getting involved, that list keeps growing. We have someone working on a ChatGPT integration with speech recognition and audio output. We have a time-lapse feature so that events can be recorded from the robot's perspective. There's a concept of a TV remote where the robot can use object detection to find the TV in the room and use an infrared transmitter to change the channel or volume. All of these things are possible with the framework that's currently in place and much more besides. There are always improvements to be made. I'm looking to keep iterating on the design. I'd like to see the legs become more agile than they are in this version and reduce the number of parts needed to create the robot. I think the design could be improved further, maybe to make it smaller or more modular so that the community can use the parts that they're interested in. Similarly, there is now interest in using other controllers besides the Pi and Arduino combination. We have someone using a Jetson Nano and as new technologies become available, we'll likely add support for some of those boards. Custom PCBs can be created relatively easily. I wanted to take a second to talk about the community that we're building around this framework. We have a GitHub repo that contains all the code and designs for the project, as well as comprehensive wikis explaining how everything is built. Besides this, we recently started a discussion section to allow people helping on the project or building their own versions to come together and discuss features, issues and ideas. I'd love to see you there as well, so feel free to join with the links in the description and say hello. With that in mind, I have a couple of examples here. This first picture was, to my knowledge, the first copy of the design in the real world. Someone from Texas built the version 2 without any assistance from me, and the first I heard of it was from this post. 
it was great to see another version of it in the wild. More recently, we have Amir in Turkey who's working hard to build his own version using a Jetson Nano and adding new functionality, such as an RFID reader for access control. We've been collaborating frequently on changes to improve both his design and the main repository. I'm often asked questions, either on Instagram or other channels, but the most asked question by far is can it walk? Now there's nothing I'd like more than to see this thing walking around the room and tap dancing up and down the stairs, but there's a lot of time involved in solving that engineering challenge. Besides the mechanics of taking a step, the entire way the robot perceives the world will need to be adjusted to make that happen. It's an exciting idea and something I'd definitely like to see happen. So if you want to help make that a reality, join the community and let's see what we can do. This project's been an amazing journey for me to learn and understand more about robotics, electronics, and software. I really enjoy seeing the reception it's received from people all over the world and the collaboration with them is such a rewarding experience. I post semi-frequent updates on the project in this channel, so feel free to subscribe if you're interested in learning more about it. And if you want to join the community to help out or just follow along, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.